Tony Morgan from Superfast Lancashire. Um, going to be slightly different for you now in terms of uh, the content of what I'm going to be talking about. There's two things really I'm going to cover. One is uh, the rollout of the new Superfast network uh, in Lancashire and across the UK really, but I'm going to focus on Lancashire. But also the innovative part of that, which is the free business support package for small and medium enterprises that go with it. Before I start though, um, I did think that before today, the most dangerous thing I'd ever find in my fridge would be out of date cheese, but apparently it's going to be the home for hackers and malware uh, going forward. So I have to check behind the back of the cheese when I get home. Okay, so Superfast Lancashire. It's really um, a significant investment in both the county uh, and our small businesses. So just within the Lancashire area, we are investing around about 130 million pounds in improving uh, the network. So when we talk about the network, what we've actually got on the ground is a whole plethora of copper that has been there and aluminium that's been there for many a long year. Now, initially, this was never designed to carry data. It was a voice uh, telephony network. So in a second, we'll have a look about what we're actually doing in terms of the technology. So this is about um, the investment is to supplement that investment that's already gone in by the commercial operators. So the likes of Virgin, the likes of BT will install Superfast Broadband where they see they will get a return. The Superfast Lancashire project is about filling in the gaps between those areas that wouldn't have got super fast access through any other means. At the end of this, round about March 2015, and contrary to some of the things you may read in the national press, the programme is on track in Lancashire. By round about March 2015, 97% of the county will have access to a reliable, stable broadband signal. Now, when you contrast that to what we've got now in some parts of the county where you're lucky, you know, you get quicker broadband if you stick it on the back of a pigeon in some uh, instances. You will get a reliable broadband. Now, when we talk about super fast, we're talking about speeds in excess of 24 meg download and 10 meg upload. I mean, that's the government's definition. The, what you will actually get will vary depending upon the actual topology of where you are, and I'll go on to that in a second. But the innovative part of this, and what I really want to talk about today, is the business support package that comes with this. This is about a three million pound ring fenced package of money uh, supplied both by the contract and by the ERDF to allow small businesses to really get underneath what this means. I mean, most of the people in this room will understand and realize the value that you'll have from fast access to the web. But small businesses don't really understand what that means to their business, and this is about taking it there. But why is it being put together? And it's really simple. It's about creating wealth. It's about giving businesses the opportunity to expand into markets they've not been in before. It's about creating jobs, and it's about driving up the value add of the county. It's a really tough target, but over the period of the next five to seven years, we're talking about growth of 20%, 19% in Lancashire. And just to give you a flavour of what uh, coverage we've got now, around about 48% of the county. So if you take, uh, say, the Virgin commercial rollout, the BT commercial rollout, and the intervention stuff that's going on, around about 48% of the county have access uh, to some form of super fast broadband. So, now normally when I stick this slide up, I apologise. Uh, it's a technical slide, but I think I need to apologise to you lot that it's not technical enough, really. So, what we've actually got here, this is what you have today. This is your standard metallic copper path broadband. So that means, um, it's a simple uh, physics question really. The further away you are from a telephone exchange, the further that electric signal has to travel down copper, and we all know it degrades. So the further away from the exchange you are, the worse your signal is. So what we're actually doing is, this bit here, between the exchange and the cabinet in the street, we replace them with fibre optic. So as you know, you can fire a light signal down a fiber optic cable for thousands of miles. The same data will be able to be regenerated perfectly when you reach a regeneration point. So the new cabinets in the street are basically moving the telephony or the equipment from the telephony exchange closer to the end user. You still have this bit here, which is copper. And many people ask, why aren't we changing that out to fiber? 
Well, it's actually a very simple economic question. To replace every single last mile in the UK would cost 20 to 30 times as much as it's costing to replace this bit here. Eventually, that end bit, the technology is in test now that will address that last piece. So what we're talking about here is download speeds of up to, and there's always that up to when you talk about broadband, 80 meg. Again, depends how far you are in this last bit here and what uh, sort of connection you've got there. The other one is fibre to the premise. Now, some areas of the county will get fibre to the premise because of the way the, uh, the network is laid out at the moment. But um, it's in trial now. The businesses can actually buy this from the retail providers. So you'll be able to buy that last bit in the ground so you can get fibre directly to your premise. And that will be a total of around about 330 meg download. So that's the technology bit. This is why, this next bit, this is for those academics in the room will probably recognise the Fisher transition curve. This is the human response to any change. And this is why uh, we've got a business support package for SMEs. So when any human being brings a new change on board, I mean, this is very simply, think about when you learn to drive. So if you don't know you can't do it, you're not too fussed. When you realise there's something that comes that you potentially can gain an advantage in life. You get this initial leap here, but then you realize, well, actually, I don't really know what I'm doing. You get behind the car wheel the first time and you realize it looks a bit harder than when your dad does it. So what you've got to really do then is to build into here. These are actual quotes from surveys done by Confederation of Small Business, by uh, the Federation of Small Business, the CBI, um, UK Online, these were things that small business said that stops them using the internet. So they just don't understand it. They haven't got the people in their organisations who understand this stuff. They're frightened of it and they feel like it's being forced upon them. So what the business support programme is about is giving people the tools and techniques to understand it. It's not a training process as such. We won't teach people to be web designers. We won't teach people to be cyber security experts. What we will give them is an acceptance of what they don't know, and then the ability to actually show what you can do once you realize that you can do something different in a business. So our business support is about bridging that gap. Okay, so what I will move on to next, let me just give you actually, before I move on, some figures around the small business arena. These are the part of the economy last year that was worth around about 15 billion pounds. They employ 99% of all the workers in the private sector. There's about half of the turnover in the private sector is in SMEs. So these are businesses from one person to 249. It's a massive part of what makes Britain tick. Now, enterprises at the top end have massive IT departments. They understand this stuff. They can get on board with it. But the SME sector is lagging behind and our program is designed to help. So. What does the training look like? And when I um, came today, I didn't realize I would probably have the most complex slide here. I thought there'd be far more complex slides. So what we actually have is a four phase process. So in the phase one, uh, one of my team will go out and really sit with the small business, understand what their strategic thought pattern is. So where do they want to go? What does their business do now? When you think about small businesses, there's some stats around such as 92% of small business at the moment have access to the internet. 70% of those have websites. But given those high numbers, why do only 27% of small businesses actually supply a service through the web? And why do only 57% of them, or actually 57% only deliver services within 10 miles of where they're based? Now, we're not going to expand the market. We're not going to get our SMEs exporting if they stay doing the things they've always done. So our program is designed, it's modular, there's 11 different sections in it, and it's designed to make people think about where they want to go. So I'll take you a quick run through what is involved in this. So one of them, developing your business in digital age. This is about businesses understanding that the world has changed around them. So it's taking them through a journey on, do you have fixed telephony or can you rely on mobility or IP telephony. 
simple things that they really probably haven't thought of about how you recruit your staff. Most small businesses still go down the old route of putting an advert somewhere. Well, put that advert on Facebook and put it on Twitter. Do something different. Go and recruit um, agency work via lots of sites on the web. So it's all of those things that give people the ability to think differently. So there's a whole raft of stuff within there. Social media is one that everybody talks about. You know, you walk down the street and you can't walk 10 yards without walking into a social media expert. Now, the thing about it is, Lots of small businesses get their IT expertise from their personal life. So the stuff their kids do or the bloke in the pub tells them how to do. So what we're talking about here is really getting businesses to understand from a business perspective the proper use of social media. So how do you really use LinkedIn in your business? How do you really use Facebook? How do you really use Twitter? How do you really use some of the other 330 different networks that are out there? Here to talk about the cloud today. So the cloud, you know. Most small businesses have heard of it, they're terrified of it, and rightly so, given some of the things we've heard today. So what we do is we just give them an overview. So this is what you can do today if you buy it and stick it in your enterprise. These are some of the things you can do if you choose to use cloud. And in all of these, we use local businesses, local experts who come in and deliver the training for us. But we also use local companies who do it today. So they will talk to other small businesses about what they've gained from it and some of the pitfalls. So hopefully again, it takes people on that journey and cuts them out from the valley of despair. And another one, business websites in the super fast era. You know, that stat I, I told you before, the Federation of Small Business reckon that 71% of small businesses have a website. When you talk to small businesses, they had it built 10 years ago by some bloke who's given them a flat page that doesn't actually do anything they can't remember the last time they looked at it. So what we do is we get an expert in here, someone, Bill Westhead, who some of you may have met from Orbit Internet, and he will tell organizations what they should really think about in constructing a website, the things that they should do, how it should be the center of their enterprise in the electronic world. And you link it to your Facebook and your Twitter and all of the other things and make it a real integral part of your business. Online security is a key one. And we use Tony Wilson, who you hear from this morning, to actually show people how online security really makes a difference. Now, the thing about it is, when we started this off with the online security, people thought it was a doom and gloom thing and we're just going to sell them something. But now they're asking to extend the time that they're with Tony. So we've actually now, we're looking at extending from two and a half hours to four or five hours because people really realise that if you're going to be online, you need to be secure. Web tools, so businesses can go out there and they can really understand how to use the web to collaborate. So we've got businesses nowadays who now do lots of video conferencing rather than, you know, it's a small business, give an example, it's a lady uh, called Julie who came to us. Um, now she runs a virtual PA business, but she was struggling because she had to go and physically see all of her clients. She now does an awful lot of web conferencing, an awful lot of online collaboration to share documents and do things in real time. She's got more clients, she's expanding. That's the sort of thing that we're looking to do. CRM, customer relationship management. Lots of businesses have customers. They don't know what to do with the data they've got. It goes from anything from keeping bits of paper to Excel spreadsheets. We use a guy called Richard Singleton to really take you through what you can do and how you ex exploit the data that you've got. Key one for us is trading internationally via the web. Um, we are working in conjunction with the UK trade and industry people and a, a guy uh, who's actually built websites for clients to sell abroad and we show you know, the pitfalls, the things you should do, the things you shouldn't do, talk about payment, all sorts of different stuff to really get businesses thinking about expanding out of that 10 mile um, footprint we talked about before. Digital marketing, so very simple, if you're going to do digital marketing, what is it? What's the sort of thing that you should be thinking about? How many times do you need to tweet if you're going to tweet? Who can tweet? Who runs your Facebook? How many times do you do things in the, um, the cyber world that you don't do in the real world? It's understanding what you have to do and the footprint you have to put down for your business to make it work. E-commerce for non-retail is about getting businesses to think about how to sell product and services that aren't retail on the web. So if you're an accountant or a solicitor or a professional services organization, how can you sell 
your services or your products using the internet, and most of them don't do it today. So we can help you understand what you do. And then finally, you're out in this big, brave world, and it's all about online branding. So you, know, you only need one person to start slagging you off on social media. You need to know how to deal with that. If you're out there, and, or your business is out there, and you don't keep an eye on what's happening in the, the cyber world, you can't control it. So it's understanding how to get your business on track with this stuff. So underpinning all that, we have a portal and a knowledge warehouse. And that knowledge warehouse, as you enter our program and you pick from these, you don't do all of them, by the way, and it's all free. You know, you pick from typically three, four, five that really will help your business. We'll give you access to all of the information at the end. We're not going to give it to you at the beginning, otherwise you won't come on the program. So at the end of the program, you get access to all of the data, but you also get access to this, which is a learning uh, portal. So in here, there's about 150 different topics. And one of those that we have in there is security. So this is about uploads all the time. Every time something happens out there in, you know, in IT, in e-commerce, in security, we'll upload it. So it keeps small businesses current. Our training program isn't a one hit and leave. It's about really understanding what small businesses need and driving them through. And we're grateful for uh, also the help of Lancaster University, UCLan, all the Chambers of Commerce, the Federation of Small Business to help us put together the programme and keep us on track and really understand what small business needs. Just, um, I thought it was appropriate as it's a security conference, a few bits of feedback to show, you know, what custom, real customers think of the content that we've got in our program. You know, this is just a small uh, smattering. When one of the things that we use uh, within our uh, training program is feedback, and there's a feedback loop all the time, and people can't leave our training center until they've given us some feedback. And, you know, hand on heart, I can say 99.9% .9 of the feedback we've had has been fantastic. Really, really good, because, it, and to me, that just shows the small business community out there is desperate to get online, desperate to work online but they don't know enough. So it's in all of our interests to give them that knowledge and to help them through. Just a couple of um, little pictures of our showcase. Um, anyone who knows Leyland Motors or the old Leyland Motors down in um, Leyland, we've taken over the old gatehouse, we've refurbished it, uh, we now do our training from there, but we don't fill it full of high tech. All we've got in there are laptops and a broadband link because that's what small businesses use in the real world. There's no point in us trying to show people how to get online and do stuff if they can't go out and buy the stuff that we're demonstrating. So all of it's really simple. The most high-tech piece of kit we've got there is a high-definition video cam. So how do people get involved in this? And the one call to action really, uh, like from today, is if you guys aren't interested in coming on because you're savvy, you must know businesses that do. So if you know a business that is in Lancashire, is based in Lancashire, is an SME, is not in retail, and would really benefit from understanding how their business could really prosper online, send them to our website, superfastlancashire.com, or come and see us today. Uh, we've got a stand, I'm sure you've all seen it and thought, what the hell's that, as you're walking past. But, you know, come and see us. So. While my little um, advert scrolls in the background, I'll just sum up. So the broadband network in the UK is being completely upgraded. Um, we are replacing whole chunks of it across the whole of the UK. Here in Lancashire, we have got one of the best coverages planned. Most areas of the UK, they're aiming for 80%, at a push 90%. We're aiming to do 97% and hopefully close that gap on the last 3%. You know, we're going to be hitting 675,000 premises across Lancashire. Not everybody's going to get 80 meg, but what everybody will get will be a guaranteed, stable, reliable service. Now, if you're a small business, the fact that your service will be reliable and faster than you've got today will enable you to think about maybe using this going forward. So, if you can't do it, you must know somebody else that can do it. Totally free training programme with lots of different elements. Come and see us, and if the worst thing you get today is we're not giving iPads away, we're giving notepads away, so come and get a free notepad or a free pen or a free lanyard, 
some information, take it back to the people who would benefit from this. Thank you very much.